here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. I travel with guns all the time, uh, and it's always interesting to me when people say, well, how do I, and then whatever it happens to be, travel on the airlines, travel across country, how do I know what the laws are, what, how, what do I do? It's one of those that it's not terribly difficult, but it's also can be a little bit complex, and it certainly is important to know how to do it the right way. And who better to talk about that than a guy who travels with guns all the time, a professional shooter, Max Michel, one of the top shooters in the country and actually in the world, captain of uh, Team SIG, the SIG shooting team, joins us right now. Max, how are you, sir? I'm good, Tom. How are you? I am good. You travel all the time, my friend. I do. In fact, I'm getting on a plane at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> of course you are. And, I, and we're not even talking about just traveling in the U.S. You travel around the world to compete sometimes. I do. You bet. So, all right, basic things. Let, let's, let's take airline travel right off the bat, because I know that, you know, a lot of people are anxious about it. They'll ask me, you know, well, I just don't know what to do. And then, of course, you got the other part of it is people are forever, I do not understand this, showing up at the security check with a gun, and then that's going to mean you're probably going to get arrested. So what do you do? You, know, you can talk about the laws and the regs, but also there's got to be some things that you do as a guy who's done this forever. Right. Yeah, I think first and foremost, you really just need to prepare and plan. Know what you're getting into before you get out there. And uh, so, you know, the first thing I would say is you have to get a good, hard-sided, lockable case that's going to go into your suitcase. So, in other words, you're going to have a good Pelican case or some other brand that you trust and love all these years. You can customize it if you want to to fit your guns. But as long as you have a good, hard-sided, lockable case, and you can lock it with TSA locks or standard locks, totally up to you. Some people prefer to have their own locks mm -hmm. because they don't want TSA or anybody else getting into it unless they really want them to, then they'll call them. But I would say start with that and then be early. Get to the airport plenty enough early. And as you go to the counter, we're going to tell them, I need to declare an unloaded firearm. Notice I said those words. I didn't say, hey, I have a gun. We don't want to say that, right? So <laughs> right. you want to be, yeah, you want to be polite and be confident and just simply relay that message that you have a firearm that you need to declare that is unloaded. And they'll give you a declaration tag. You'll fill that out. They'll tape it to the top of the box, and you'll stick that in your suitcase. And typically, you're on your way at that point. Now, every airport's a little different, as you know, Tom. Every agent's mm -hmm. a little different. But they may ask different questions. But as long as you let them feel as if they are doing their job, and but you know the rules and you know how to handle yourself in a confident way, uh, you should be good to go from, from that standpoint. I, I've run into several things. And you're right. Every airport's different. Uh, at some airports... You give the locked case, you declare it. I, I always say, I need a firearm declaration card. It's just a different way of doing it, but it's exactly what you're talking about. And then yep. once they do that, sometimes the agent will just turn around and put it on the conveyor belt. Other places, they'll say, well, you need to take it over there to the security guy, the TSA guy, and he'll check it. And then still other airports, they say, well, wait right here, and security will come over and pick you up and walk you over to the area. Again, goes to your point of, Leave extra time. Get to the airport early, right? That's right. You know, one of the airports that I use an awful lot now is Orlando, and they've completely changed where now you have to go downstairs to a different security area, Ooh. which takes a lot more time. So as long as you're plenty, two-plus hours, I always say, two-plus hours or more for stateside travel for outside of the country, three-plus hours. And we are really unclear at this point as to what kind of locks to put on because the regulations actually say you have to have a lock that nobody else has a key to, which would mean you don't use a TSA lock. The problem we have had at Gun Talk on two occasions at least, maybe more, we have actually had TSA cut the locks off of our gun cases, even though they were declared. I mean, literally cut the locks off. And, of course, you, know, you think, well, you know what? If you guys are going to do that, maybe I will go to start using TSA locks. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I have two different cases, depending on what I'm, what type of travel I'm doing, what type of match it is. And one has an internal lock and, and the other has TSA locks. Um, and either way, I always put a, a little index card on top of that case that says my name and my phone number and says, please call if you need to get into the box. And that uh -huh. helps at times, but 
Yeah. Okay. Good to hear. And you were talking about when you're talking about getting a small case you put inside your other luggage, that's obviously for a handgun. If you're traveling with long guns, shotguns and rifles, you need a full size uh, long gun case. And you need to check the regulations for the airline and TSA about taking ammo with you. There's a limit to five kilos, which turns out to be 11 pounds of ammo. And one thing you don't want to do is don't have your mags loaded. You need to have the ammunition in either the original box or something like that, like an MTM case guard uh, box, right? Correct. Yeah, and, and I, so that you mentioned the 11 kilos, that's correct. And that, but that's a total number. That's not per bag. So that's a total number for each traveler, and that's ah. about 300 to 350 rounds of nine mil to give you an idea. Um, but and then another quick thing, Tom, on that is I would just simply, if you have the you know, quick opportunity to grab some scotch tape or some sort of duct tape or something, and just tape your boxes shut as well. Because yes. if not, you're going to get to your destination, and sometimes those rounds are all over the place. So just make sure you can tape them up a little bit. Yeah, or, or even big rubber bands. I've used those as well. Just something to make sure this cardboard box or whatever it is doesn't pop open and you got loose rounds flying around inside your suitcase. Right. Right, exactly and I'll say right. one more thing too on that from mm-hmm. from from that standpoint as well is once you get to your destination, each airline is a little different. So, for instance, Delta, they will tag that bag as as if it has a firearm and needs to be handled carefully. They'll take it off of the plane and bring it to the baggage service area where you're going to have to show your ID. Where other airlines, maybe like a Southwest, they just simply put it on a conveyor belt with every other bag. So you just have to know who you're flying with and where your bags are going to be, either an oversized baggage baggage service desk or potentially on the actual conveyor belt and everybody's a little different on how they handle that from another security standpoint one of the things i've started doing is putting big pieces of like yellow duct tape on the outside of the case i mean basically so that i can see it from across the whole baggage area so if someone were to pick up my gun case and start walking off with it i would see this case with this huge strip of yellow tape on both sides of it and can identify that. That's a great point. You know, scary, quick, scary story. I flew into Orlando, which is the, you know, obviously Disney World, everybody's going to Disney World type of thing. So there's plenty of folks there. Mm -hmm. And I remember I got there, I was was waiting for my bags to get off the belt. I got one bag and I started checking emails on my phone and all of a sudden I look up and I say, oh my gosh, I'm the last person here. And there's one bag left on the belt and it looks like my bag, but it's not my bag. Uh-oh. And would you know it, somebody took my bag with my firearms, and they were getting ready to go on a cruise in oh. Orlando. And luckily, by the grace of God, I went to the baggage service desk, and they had called this passenger because I had their bag, of course, right? So they called right. this passenger that I had the bag for, and they they answered the phone. Most people don't answer the phone when they don't recognize the number, but they actually answered the phone, and I was able to get that person to come back and swap bags. Um, but, yeah, that's a very, very good point that you have about identifying your bag as your bag. Well, and, and make it look like, so it's not doesn't look like everybody else's bag when it comes around on the conveyor belt. Just kind of one of those that's other good. things here. Hey, Max, hold on a second here. I want to talk when we come back a little bit about uh, traveling across country in cars and driving and what we need to know about that. We're talking with Max Michel. Uh, you can check him out, Max Michel, M-A-X-M-I-C-H-E-L.com. A uh, incredible shooter. If you've ever seen him shoot, holy moly. Uh, we'll be right back with more Gun Talk. All right, I'm Tom Gresham. The show is Gun Talk. If you'd like to join us, just dial 866-TALK-GUN or Tom Talk Gun. We're talking with top pro shooter Max Michelle about traveling with guns. We've been talking about on the airlines, and that's fairly straightforward. The regulations are online, and each airline has its own rules. Just go to their website and, and be prepared to spend extra time. But Max, sometimes we're in the car, in the truck. We're driving across the country, and there are specific things we either need to know or need to do. How do you handle that? Yeah, so that's that's another goes back to let's prepare and be ready for whatever we're going to be driving through. Because most most of us, you know, at least I won't say most of us, but you and I, we live down in the South. Typically, we're we're you know where guns are good. We're driving through Texas and right. Florida and you know, Louisiana, things of that nature, and really don't even have to think about it. But I made the mistake one time of going into New York just to fly, yeah, just to fly in and out to shoot a match and not have the proper permit. And that was a really bad situation. I was jammed up for a while there at the airport, had to make a lot of phone calls to get out of that, um, to, to have somebody's help me kind of work my way through it. But 
So I would say number one is know where you're going and where you're driving through and understand that just because we live in the United States of America, not every state is the same. So if you have a concealed carry permit in Louisiana, maybe it doesn't reciprocate to wherever you're going or maybe where you're driving through. Another big thing is the which some people don't think about is the mag capacity. So if I have a 21-round SIG P320 mag that's mm-hmm. beautiful in Louisiana and I drive through another state where it's only a 10-round state, then I'm going to be in, in pretty good trouble there, like New York. And that's where I kind of found myself in that situation. So I mm-hmm. tend to avoid all those situations, but know kind of before where you're going and what that path is and where you're driving through and understand that each set of laws are going to be different for each state. It's a great point. I use a, a website, handgunlaw.us, and it gives really good information on reciprocity, but also it kind of lists what the rules are, the re- laws are in various states. And I mentioned I was on, I'm on this driving trip around the country right now, and I made sure that even though I'm legal to carry in most of the states where I'm going to be, I have a locking case that I can put my carry gun in, unloaded, when I go through the occasional state where that, that's a no-no, I also am going to alter my path somewhat to make sure I don't go through New York, don't go through Massachusetts, where they have absolutely no sense of humor, and they will throw you in jail if you inadvertently break the law there. Absolutely. I do the same thing, Tom. I avoid those areas at all costs. And even when I'm flying into different areas, if I have a match somewhere or an event, in fact, I'm going up to the New Jersey, New York area uh, in a couple weeks for an event for SIG, and I'm doing my very best to avoid those certain situations where I'm either shipping product into local dealers with FSLs, or mm-hmm. when I bring it, I'm going to fly into a certain airport that allows me to, to do, you know, fly in with I need to fly in with, but absolutely you need to be paying, paying attention ahead of time and understanding those rules. It's not enough to say, well, we shouldn't have to do that. And that is true. We shouldn't have to do that. But the reality is we do have to do that, and you ignore that at serious peril. Right, and that was a mistake I made. This was probably 20 years ago, maybe, um, maybe 15 to 20 years ago. I, when I flew up to New York to shoot a competition, I just – and, and the guy said ahead of time. They put out an email, hey, if you're coming from out of state, this is what you have to do, X, Y, and Z. And I just – I was – back then and even now, we're all so very busy in what we're doing. I, my immediate thought was – hey, I live in America, what's the difference, right? Well, I found out really quickly there was a difference. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different Americas out there. So, Max, where are you off to next? <laughs> I'm heading to SIG tomorrow. I'm going to be uh, working with the West Point team. They have their nationals coming up pretty soon, and I'm an Army guy, so I like to make sure that they're ready to go and see if they can't win another <laughs> national championship. <laughs> yes, you are. You, uh, you were. How many years were you on the AMU? I was there for 10 years. Holy cow. Yeah, so shooting for the government, shooting government money, shooting that government ammo. I like that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that was a lot better to shoot back then when it was free. (laughs) (laughs) I guess. Very good. Well, look, you have a great trip up to SIG. Tell all the folks there hi. I mean, just it is amazing to me all the things they're doing and the the product they're cranking out and the 365s and the P320s and all the rest of it. It's just like every other week there seems to be something new and interesting coming out of that place. It's absolutely incredible. I'm very proud to be a part of that company. I know you have to do the same thing I do when I ask you what's new, and you have to stop and go, okay, which things can I talk about yet, right? (laughs) That's right. There's always (laughs) something new coming out, always. Exactly. Well, best of the family, and thank you so much for helping us here. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. All right. You take care. Max Michelle. 